Hi, my name is uh, Steve Henneveld. I work at Nickelodeon Animation Studios. I am a storyboard artist. I've been there for about two years now, um, moving up through the ranks. I uh, graduated Kendall in 2007. So what were some of the jobs that you took before you got to your awesome job of storyboarder at Nickelodeon? Uh, there, were, there were a lot of jobs in between. Uh, after I graduated, um, unfortunately, I was still in uh, Michigan for what I wanted to do, which only really exists in LA. So uh, we moved to LA, and I did freelance and live action which is not what I wanted to do, but it was still storyboarding and it got me a lot of experience, mostly with dealing with people, mm -hmm. not as much as um, the art I would like. So, um, you know, I still tested and eventually um, got in after a while into um, Nickelodeon, um, working as a storyboard revisionist on Penguins of Madagascar, which was a great opportunity. It was, um, looking back on it, as good a job as I could have gotten to start with because it's, um, it's a CG show, which means that there's a lot of leeway with the drawing, and I got to learn. And a revisionist position in a studio, a storyboard revisionist position in a studio is um, the closest thing I think the industry has to an apprenticeship. Um, you learn while doing, and you get paid to do it, which is fantastic. You can't ask for anything more than that. I took the advice of some other professionals in the industry and would just sit down and draw characters. I'd break them down into shapes. I would look at movies, I would take still images of them, and I would find out where the circles, where the squares are. And you know, it's based off of other, other structure that I've learned, um, that I've been taught about, you know, the head's a circle, the neck um, comes out of that circle, the chin protrudes from the circle, not the neck, you know, it, from the head. It's, it's a lot of uh, technical stuff that um, really helped me um, learn to draw characters in all angles, in all directions, because that's what the job of a, even of a, re a revisionist is, uh, storyboard artist and a revisionist. You have to draw a character from all angles. And it's not, you know, you sit down and you draw something for you, you know what you want, you just do it, but this is for somebody else, and that means that they want something specific, mm -hmm. and that's what you have to do, and that's the leap, that's the gap that you have to cross in order to uh, perform in uh, the industry. As far as a portfolio goes, what you think will get you a job. That's so general, but um, if you're going for storyboarding, you put storyboards in there. If you're going for animation, it's animation, it's your animation. And obviously, you wouldn't be able to do that in a flat book portfolio and animation. You know, A lot of stuff is online now. I think most studios do stuff online, still accept um, you know, portfolio, the flat book, you know, printed it out and everything type of portfolio, but um, with the way the industry is going now, everything's online. So you can put together your animation and put it out there if that's what you want to do. Um, I would highly suggest being specific. If you're going for a 2D animation job, that's what you should have. I mean, if you want to put storyboards in there, that's great, but the person hiring you for the job isn't really going to consider those. They need to fill the position. You need to be somebody they want. So um, put your best stuff in there, put it first, and then you know, pad it with some of the stuff that maybe isn't you know, your best, but is still quality work. And you, know, you, you have to grind it out. And you'll probably not get a lot of feedback right away and then maybe you might start getting tests and then eventually a job, and that's what happened with me. When I think about your story, Steve, it took you a lot of perseverance to get to where you are, mm -hmm. and you just stuck it out. You were just yeah. like, I'm gonna do this, I've got this vision, and it was hard for mm -hmm. you and your family. And mm -hmm. um, Can you talk a little bit about what it took? I, mean, I just see it as huge courage, what, what you guys did to try to get to the place where you are. Yeah, I, I get asked a lot, um, would you do it again? Would you move to LA again? And I always say, yeah, I did it. Yeah. I mean, there's, I already answered the question. Like, I moved out there, I did it. Would I do it knowing what I'd have to go through again if I was guaranteed the final result every single time, you know? But there were some, there was a lot of scary moments, you know? We didn't plan on moving to LA 
um, right before the you know, recession hit. You know, I brought my wife of less than a year or a year out there and to a place where she was uncomfortable halfway across the country. Um, thankfully, she had um, some family out there. I didn't at all, you know, and so we have to, deal, that was hard to deal with just from the beginning. And we moved out there without jobs, which is scary and uh, irresponsible <laughs> in many people's uh, viewpoints, you know, and it is, it's true. I think about it now and I'm like, oh, I would never do that, but I did it, you know, and um, I guess I had some faith in myself being uh, hardworking and, uh, you know, I was going to put the work in no matter what and I always thought of myself as if I stayed doing something that I didn't want to do, um, I, I would regret it and I know I would have and, and my wife recognized that so I mean, that helped out a lot and eventually after some hard work, I mean, I didn't just move out there and get a job handed to me, it took work after that too. Right, so. right. Constant drawing, right? Constant drawing. <laughs> I draw every day. I draw um, while I'm watching TV. I do studies. You know, I find other people's work that I like. I look at it. I study it. I break it down and figure out what I like about it. And I try and bring that into my work. It's not copying. I never copy anything, but I do study it so that I can figure out what I like about it. Mm -hmm. So anytime I can add anything in, you know, I do. And it's it's simple things like you just see stuff you're like oh this would work great right there and you throw it in and if it doesn't work you cut it out you know and it's, it's, it's extra work you're doing it's always extra work you're doing but the payoff is huge I mean there's nothing better than seeing a joke that I came up with kind of on the fly and just threw in there and you know it went all the way through and now it's on television so it's kind of a big deal I think especially from you know that's what I wanted there it is the best thing I experienced was something kind of secondhand. Um, the first storyboard I did, which is a big deal. It's a lot of work, and doing it means that you're kind of on another, um, kind of not at another level, but you're doing so much work in such a short period of time, and you're you're doing it well. And I wanted my first episode to go so well. And so you finish it, you turn it in, and then somebody else takes it and puts it into like an animatic, like a movie form where it's just your drawings put to the dialogue. And then all these people sit in a room and watch it and you're not there. And uh, I heard back afterward, like everybody came in and was like, they were asking who drew that and, and who's, you know, who was that, who did that? And that was the best feeling I could have gotten because it was other people like wanting to tell me how great like some of the guys who run the show get paid the big bucks were like this is really good and that's exactly what I wanted when I was at Kendall that's what I wanted and I got it and it, it felt really good yeah any last words of advice for a Kendall student entering this this workplace um I guess my my biggest piece of advice would be to um, look at other people's work who like it, people who have the job that you want look at their stuff and try and pull from it. There's so much on the internet now that you can look at what they're doing and try and emulate it. And that's not, that doesn't mean copy, but take it and try and bring your work up to that level. And that includes drawing every day. That's something you have to do. You have to sketch, um, read books on sketching. That's what I did. Um, learn how to draw, not like them, but take aspects of it and, and uh, put it into you. I mean, everybody has a style and they pull from everybody else and, and develop, you know, what you want to do. And, and that's, uh, I don't know, I guess that's my biggest piece of advice. Awesome. You know, the directors run around because they don't want to hear their own voice. And they come up to us and beg us, like, uh, who can you do? You can do Bob. So just, they just randomly pick somebody that was something. It's not like they're like, oh, I've heard you talk before. You were Bob, you know. And then, like, no, I'm not a Bob. Um, you guys got anything to eat? <laughs> um, I'm gonna go talk to my girlfriend. Uh, you, uh, where, is she in the fridge again? <sighs> She's always hiding in the fridge. Right. <laughs> 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 you have models with the Bob. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. All right, Thank cool. you. Thanks. <laughs>